Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our third AT Talk. This morning's topic is finding, trying, and funding assistive technology. Our speakers are Laura Hall and Tracy Strading. Laura Hall of Michigan Disability Rights Coalition supports the program's advisory council and coordinates Michigan assistive technology programs efforts with many other organizations, including the AT leadership team at Disability Network Michigan. She also manages and provides technical assistance to local organizations who provide device demonstrations and other services through the program. Laura provides training to the public through both webinars and in-person training sessions and is a regular contributor to Michigan Assistive Technology Program's blog. Tracy Strading of MyUCP manages the Michigan Assistive Technology Loan Program and the MyLease Program. Tracy has worked and advocated for over 25 years in the disability community. She has served on self-determination project work groups, recipient rights committee, supported the Consumer Advisory Committee, and served as co-chair of the Housing Resource Network. Tracy's past work includes options counseling to assist individuals to transition home from congregate facilities. If you need sketches or a certificate of completion, please email me at ddudash at myucp.org and I'll put that in the chat box. Laura is starting us off this morning. Welcome, Laura. Thank you, Diane. Hi, everyone. Um, again, I'm Laura Hall. I'm the co-director of the Michigan Assistive Technology Program, and I'm happy to um, be here this morning talking to you about what our program does, who we are, and um, giving you some examples of some assistive technology that uh, we have available. So um, just going to start out by giving a visual description of myself. Um, for those that may not be able to see me, I am a um, white woman with short um, brown chin length hair. Um, and today I have on a polka dot shirt. Um, so we're going to start um, with fi finding, trying, and funding AT. I just wanted to note um, that I'm going to mention the descriptions of the pictures, again, as a point of access. Um, the picture on this screen is of three disabled people of color baking. A black non-binary person on the left holds a mixing bowl while the South Asian person in the middle prepares a muffin pan and the black woman on the right measures out the chocolate mix. Um, I just want to mention that the, this image and several others in our presentation are from um, the Disabled and Here Project. That is a photo and interview series that celebrates Black, Indigenous, People of Color, or BIPOC. Um, these image descriptions that I'm giving are written by the folks at Disabled in Here. So just wanted to let you know that's a resource because um, it is not very often that we see people with disabilities represented in, uh, in, in images and stock photos, and even less rare that we see people with disabilities of color. So just wanted to point that out as a resource. Can we go to the next slide? Please. Um, again, this is our information. I want to start out by talking a little bit about MDRC's mission. Um, Michigan Disability Rights Coalition cultivates disability pride and strengthens the disability movement by recognizing disability as a natural and beautiful part of human diversity while collaborating to dismantle all forms of oppression. So as I shared, the Michigan Assistive Technology Program is part of Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, and our mission is what we believe, um, and it is reflected in the work that we do. Can we go to the next slide? So what is assistive technology? We define assistive technology as any um, item, piece of equipment, software, or app that's used to help people with disabilities, including older adults, do what they want to do. Um, technology can make things easier for everyone. We'd like to say the difference between technology and assistive technology is that for people with disabilities, assistive technology really opens up, po up possibilities. And I did want to mention that um, I think there is... Um, 
a misunderstanding out there sometimes that assistive technology has to be something that's high tech or has a battery or is expensive. And um, in reality, most assistive technology, a lot of assistive technology is low tech, like this rainbow uh, pill organizer that's in the left hand corner of the screen. It could be useful for someone who has difficulty. Um, taking their medication, and we're going to talk a little bit more about how these simple pieces of AT can really make a difference um, in a person's ability to live in their own community. So also shown on this, this slide is a, a, door a doorknob gripper that's attached to a round doorknob. It can make it easier to open uh, doors for people who have arthritis or limited fine motor control um, or something like that. And the final picture on the slide is a person using a walker. Um, I'm going to talk in more detail, but AT can prevent falls and has really made a difference for people um, who has moved out of nursing homes and into their own homes. Can we go to the next slide? So more about our program and what we do. Uh, the Michigan Assistive Technology Program provides AT-related supports around the state. We serve people from um, birth to older adults. Um, so we provide demonstrations and short-term loans of, assistive of AT devices. Um, this means that if you are interested in assistive technology and would like to figure out what types of things would work for you, um, you could contact us, we could go over the different options um, and show different features of the devices with while, while you have those in your hands. So right now with, with COVID and waiting to see how everything comes out with that, we are doing virtual demonstrations and short-term loans and um, we can deliver those devices right to your door, either by mail or one of our staff people can do a porch pickup. Um, the short-term loans are the opportunity for you to borrow devices for a period of time. For um, for a lot of assistive technology, it's hard to know whether it will work for you unless you try it in your own environment. Um, you're able to try it for a longer period of time to see if it works long-term. And um, whether it's going to work in your daily life and in, in the environment that you live in. Um, we also provide awareness information about assistive technology, um, both access to it and how to acquire it. Um, we provide training like uh, we're doing here today. Um, we're in partnership with the, the Michigan Assistive Technology Loan Program, which Tracy is going to talk about um, when I finish this section. And we also have a website called atexchange.org. I like to call this um, kind of like the Craigslist for disability related equipment. Um, it is a uh, system that allows folks to look on the website and see assistive technology that other people are looking to sell or donate. Um, and then if you see something that you're interested in, the site allows you to connect directly with the seller and make the exchange. A lot of folks have been able to um, purchase assistive technology used um, a lot cheaper that way. And it uh, works well for a lot of folks that are, are just wanting to um, have their assistive technology go to other people that need it. So the last thing I want to say on this slide is that all of the things that we do are by people with disabilities and for people with disabilities and their allies. All of the staff at the Michigan Assistive Technology Program have uh, disabilities. We are proud people with disabilities and we are users of assistive technology. And so I think that really sets us apart. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, so I talked a little bit before about some of the benefits of assistive technology. And um, there's been a lot of research done on the benefits of assistive technology. And some of the results that we've seen from those studies is that assistive technology really is the most effective strategy for helping us do what we want to do. Uh, these studies have found that when folks use assistive technology, uh, decline is slowed. There are fewer nursing home and hospital stays. Um, people have greater functional independence, reduced falls, 
Um, assistive technology is a benefit because it's available where and when we need it. Um, it's not something where we have to rely on human support or other people's schedules to get uh, help. The, the technology is there when we need it. And it also um, speaks to the values of self-direction and autonomy. So being able to make decisions about um, how you want your life to, to go. And assistive technology can assist with that. Um, the picture on this slide is of a stick figure um, falling and the text over the picture says safe zone fall protection. Can we go to the next slide? So I mentioned um, studies on the benefits of AT and wanted to mention some of the, the AT that was used in these studies. So vibrating alarm clocks, motion detecting lights, um, assisted li listening devices, those could be amplified uh, listening devices for folks that have hearing disabilities, um, toilet and tub bars, some meal prep tools, walkers with wheels, basket seats and brakes, um, different types of dressing aids, bed assists, uh, photo phones, pill dispensers, and um, you'll see here that the studies found that 28% of hospital admissions for people 65 and older are due to medication errors. So that really speaks to how helpful something like a medication reminder system could be um, because folks are, are being um, sent to nursing homes because of medication errors and inability to kind of manage medication. Assistive technology is one of those things that can, can mitigate that need. Um, so reminder devices were another type of AT that was used, as well as eating aids. And the picture on this slide uh, shows some eating aids. It shows some built-up silverware, some angled silverware, and also something that we call a scoop plate. It has a higher edge on one side, making it easier to scoop your food. But, so choosing AT, um, a lot of people think that they see a piece of assistive technology and that's the thing that will work for them. And sometimes that, that does work. But typically, um, we start by looking at what people's goals are. What is it that you're trying to do that you're um, having, either having a hard time with, not able to do, or you know, are, are wishing that you could do with the use of assistive technology. And we go from there. Uh, we will then re research different device options and um, find out what's available for that kind of need. Uh, it's important to know your environment. So again, um, you know, you wouldn't want to bring, for example, a, a new scooter into your home, not knowing whether it can fit through the door or not. Um, so really knowing your environment, what, you're, what you have available to you is important, as well as um, reviewing your resources. So that could include financial resources, um, you know, what, what supports you have from friends, friends and family that might be able to help set up an installation of assistive technology and uh, other programs that might help you to acquire AT. Um, these are all these are all things that the, the assistive technology program can help with as part of follow up to the demonstrations and short term loans as well. Uh, and the photo on this slide is of a detective looking through a magnifying glass. So I just want to go through some examples of the assistive technology that we have available at our program. I'm just going to give you an idea of the different areas of life that we can cover and the different types of devices we have. In the upper left-hand corner is a automatic jar opener. So this jar opener fits right over um, a jar. And all you need to do is push the button, the orange button that's on the top. It locks around the edge of the lid and turns it. This really works best for like glass jars and not so much things like peanut butter um, because it will crush those kind of, of uh, jars. But um, for glass jars, it works excellent. The second picture is of a um, product called Liftware. Uh, this silverware has technology in it that helps with... Um, canceling tremors or keeping the spoon level um, no matter what angle you're holding it at. So it has that technology that will keep it level. And um, 
worked for certain types of tremors, not all tremors. So this is one of those things that is frequently used um, as a short-term loan so people can get used to, uh, to trying that and seeing if it'll work for them. Next to the lifter, we have a picture of a device called a six-in-one. And this is a, um, a multi-opener. So it's got a jar opener. It's got an opener to open bottle caps and um, bottle tops. Um, there's a, a there's a razor on the end to help open bags um, and just different ways of, of opening things all with one device. The um, photo in the lower left-hand corner is a photo of um, a large pizza cutter. And I don't think that a lot of people realize that pizza cutters can also be used to cut vegetables or some fine meats or sandwiches. Um, and so we don't like to count out that the low tech AT again. Um, the next picture is of a pair of, uh, a person holding a pair of kitchen scissors and cutting up looks to be onions. Kitchen scissors, again, are another thing that can be used if you're unable to, to chop. And uh, next to that, we have something called the veggie chop. And that, that is a device where you pull a, um, a string on the top and it cuts the veggies up. And finally, the last picture is um, of a South Asian person sitting in her wheelchair. Um, she places a muffin pan into a mid-height oven with a side hinge door, and she's wearing an oven mitt that looks like a bear waving its paw. So that is another example of ET. Um, moving on to waking, grooming, and dressing. Um, again, ET can be something simple like a handheld shower head. Uh, we have devices that are um, amplified alarm clocks or alarm clocks with bed shakers for folks with hearing disabilities or folks that just really have a hard time getting up. Um, that can be really helpful. The picture next to that is a lotion, a long-handled lotion applicator, um, which can be used, you know, just daily for daily living. Um, and the final picture on the top row is of something we call the Don and Doffer. Uh, this is a device that helps put on, helps you to put on a uh, compression hose. So the hose goes over the, um, the cone that's there. And then the, a rubber, the rubber sleeve is used to, to roll the hose down. And so that's helpful to a lot of folks. Um, on the bottom left is a, a photo of a product that's called the uh, Freedom Wand. And the Freedom Wand um, is a handheld uh, device that can hold a, a piece of toilet paper or a wipe. It can hold a razor um, or ointment if you need to apply ointment or a loofah. Um, most often we see people using this for hygiene, so in toileting. Um, it's something that we don't talk about a lot, but I think it's important to know that there is AT out there for hygiene and things that can be discreet and portable and useful to people who need them. Um, next to that, I have a picture of what we call the hip kit. Um, this is often things that people need after they have hip replacement surgery. So we've got some elastic shoelaces, um, a sock aid that helps you put your sock on, a long-handled shoehorn, a reacher, uh, a dressing stick, and a long-handled sponge. And the final picture on the slide is um, a talking reminder clock or alarm clock. So um, if folks need that auditory feedback, that can be helpful um, as well. Next slide. AT for mobility. So uh, these are things that can help uh, while, you're, while you're out and about or just to help um, with moving around. The first thing is something called the swivel seat. So you sit this in, in a car or a chair where you need to swivel. Um, it moves on an axis and it enables you to swing your legs out of the car um, easier. The 
other pictures on the top are of a device that we call the handy bar. It fits um, into the latch of your car door. And if, you, if you're able to see on the bottom row, I've got a picture, a close-up picture of how that actually goes in the, the, the latch there. But that provides a really sturdy um, handle to help you stand up out of the car. It also doubles as a seatbelt cutter in the event of an emergency and can break a window also in the event of an emergency. On the bottom row, we have something called the VersaCart. This is like, it's almost like a stroller, very lightweight um, canvas bag for carrying things with the lid. Um, I use this for grocery shopping sometimes, and this has been helpful for me because I use a wheelchair. Um, it's lightweight and I can kind of steer it with one hand and push it with one hand. So I find that helpful. Um, Next to that is a photo of something called the bed caddy. And this is a um, this is kind of a ladder that attaches to one end of a bed that has rungs on it that you can use to pull yourself up into a sitting position. Um, the next picture next to that kind of looks like an invisible dog leash, but um, actually it's a leg lifter. So the uh, it fits around your foot and you can use that to, to lift your feet, help you dress, help you transfer things like that. Uh, we have furniture risers that can be a really low-tech, easy way to help folks that have difficulty getting on and off, uh, off their furniture. Can we go to the next slide? Thank you. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, assistive technology for executive functioning, and this is a really big area. So I'm only going to touch on a few uh, things, but um, executive functioning can involve of having visual or auditory cues, um, using ET that can help with step-by-step -step instruction, um, assistance transitioning through tasks, organizing, uh, reminding, and sensory processing. Next slide, please. Thank you. So here's a few examples of step-by-step uh, -step and transition AT for transitioning. Um, the first picture is of a screenshot of an app called I Can Plan, and this is available um, on the Apple platform. This allows you to create like a to-do list or a task list and use um, audio, video, and text to describe the different steps. So for example, if I were to on my app click on that first picture that shows a cup of coffee, I could add pictures and audio and text that also run through the steps of how to make the coffee. So maybe how to measure the water, um, how much coffee to put in, what buttons to push, etc. cetera. Um, the second picture is of a talking photo album. And uh, we originally purchased this as a low vision device and then realized that this can also be used as a step-by-step -step tool, very low tech. Um, if you have someone who's on the job, for example, and might need help step-by-step um, -step through, ta through tasks, you could put different pictures in the sleeves of the Talking Photo album and then record audio that goes along with those uh, pictures that describe the task. So that's another low-tech option. Um, the other picture is of something called the Time Tracker. And as I said, um, Transitioning from task to task can be difficult for some folks. So the time tracker is um, an alarm system that you can set and you can set different intervals so that it will go from red to yellow to green and help just kind of alert when that transition is coming, coming up. Hey, Laura. So, yes. Before we move on, there's a couple of questions about the app um, in the group chat. So they want to know the name of the apps and so that we can share a link for people, possibly. Um, I bet Mike would maybe be able to look up the uh, the link for people if we were able to share the name of the app that you're you're referencing there. The task. Yeah. Yeah. Again, what, that's called. What platforms can it be used on? Do you know? That that's called I Can Plan, and I believe it can only be used on the Apple platform. Okay. There are. Um, there are, of course, lots of to-do lists and reminders. Um, this is the one, the only one that I found that enables you to use audio and pictures and text all at the same time. 
Okay, so um, hopefully someone can um, do that while we're moving through here. And if not, then toward the end when we get to the queue. Oh, he found it. Mike posted the link. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, Mike. <laughs> okay, Great. we'll go on from here. Thanks so much. So while, while we're kind of talking about, um, about tasks and getting through tasks, I do want to talk a, a little bit about some assistive technology for employment. Um, and because this is an important area that folks need some support in sometimes. Um, there's a variety of AT that can help with employment. And it really just depends, again, on what the person um, needs. I can, I can think of a few examples that we've done recently. Um, one is um, of the LiveScribe pen. And this is a, um, it's called a smart pen. And what it does is when you take notes on the, um, live scribe paper it's a special type of paper and as you write it's also recording what's happening in the room that you're in so whether you're talking someone else is talking or you're in a lecture it's recording as you're writing in the notebook so then you can stop it go back tap your pen on that place and it will play what is recorded during that time um, we found that this is helpful even for people who don't uh don't write or don't take notes. Um, I have a colleague that likes to use this by just writing symbols and that, that mean, those mean certain things to him. And so he's able to keep his notes even though he can't take copious notes. Um, those symbols are enough to tell him, I wanna go back and listen to what was said here. Um, so that's one that we, that we show quite often. Adaptive mouses can be another example of AT for for employment, um, I use something called a, a tracker ball, and that is a it's a big ball in the middle that I use with my hands because I don't have good fine motor skills. And then there's buttons on the side. There are vertical mouses. There are mouses that you can use with one finger. Um, all different types. The same thing goes for keyboards. There's one-handed keyboards, keyboards with large print, um, keyboards that have high contrast all sorts of types of things for that. A software could be another thing. For example, um, maybe it's text-to-speech software or maybe it's word prediction software that can help folks in, the, in, in their job. Um, again, really just depends on the person, but wanted to give you a few examples of what could be. So next slide. Um, let's talk a little bit about AT for mental health. Um, Specifically, anxiety and PTSD, I think people are becoming more and more familiar with the, the weighted blankets and how that can really be a help for people that are experiencing um, anxiety or PTSD or any other kind of uh, mental health disability. We don't have those for demonstration um, just because they are hard to, to wash and sanitize, but I did want to bring that up as um, a piece of AT that people might not always think of as AT. Um, some of the other things that we use for AT and mental health are um, apps. So we have one called um, Breathe to Relax. And I, I like this app because it takes you through the process of breathing and it tells you how long to breathe in for, how long to breathe out. You can set it for what's comfortable for you. I think sometimes when folks are in the kind of throes of anxiety, it's hard to even just kind of get their breathing down. So um, I like that app a lot. Uh, PTSD Coach was developed by the Department of Veterans Affairs um, and can be used by people with uh, PTSD or other symptoms. Um, it helps you to track and monitor your symptoms and give some suggestions of things that you can do to help with those symptoms. Um, it also allows you, if you don't like you know, one of the suggestions, you can say, I don't like this, and they won't show it to you again. So it's really trying to find out um, methods that work for you. Another app that I'm, I really like is something called Calm. Um, this is an app that you can get for free. They have a whole lot more content if you buy the paid version, but um, the free version works well too. These provide, um, Calm provides some, some meditations, uh, some some sleep sounds, sleep music, and um, just different things to help with, with anxiety. It's, if you're familiar with Headspace, it's, it's a lot, it's very similar to Headspace in the way that they, they have 
many, many different meditations and sounds and stories to help you sleep. Um, so calm is another one. Next slide. Okay. Environmental controls is um, something that's becoming more and more popular. And this is uh, exciting to me because I love this area. Um, so when I talk about environmental controls, I'm really talking about things that you can control with your voice um, using a smart speaker. And that right now, um, the main two are the Amazon Alexa and the Google Home. Um, both are really similar in what they can do. So uh, you can make and receive video calls hand, hands free. You can send and receive text, photos, and video messages. Again, hands free. Um, display photos that you receive via text from loved ones. And most importantly for me, you can use smart speakers to help control compatible devices. So, for example, um, in the ET program, we have a Roomba vacuum that is compatible with Alexa that you can start by voice. Um, we have a coffee maker that you can set and start by voice, either by Google Home or Alexa. Um, we have a oven, um, countertop oven, convection oven. It's also an air fryer. Um, that's a new one that just came out that I'm still learning how to use. Um, and for example, uh, white Wi-Fi light bulbs are another um, example of an environmental control. You can use these with Alexa or you can use them with an app where if you're not able to turn your light bulb on, you can ask Alexa or Google Home to turn on the light or um, oftentimes these, these light bulbs often have an app that go with them where you're able to turn it on from your phone as well. And of course, you can watch the stream shows like Hulu, Amazon Prime, um, Netflix, those types of things. And um, I think the smart speakers are also good for setting reminders and alarms and integrating your calendar with it. Um, so there's so many things that you can do and it's changing every day. You can go to the next slide, please. Okay, so uh, I wanted to talk about um, a few new areas that we're getting into. We've really, in the last year, our program has taken a look at um, areas of need in the state, what assistive technology are people looking for that we didn't have available? And uh, we have several new areas that we're getting into. One is assistive technology for gardening. Uh, this is something that I'm really passionate about because I have garden started this year. And I'm finding some of this technology so helpful. Um, so on the slide is a picture of some uh, ergonomic hand garden tools that are um, the handle is shaped, it's curved, almost like an umbrella handle. Um, and that is supposed to make it easier on your wrist to do the gardening. Um, the second item on here is um, a photo of a garden hose sprayer with a, um, with a thumb knob. So you, you use your thumb and there on the handle, there's a, um, a lever that you push up and down to to set the intensity of the water. And then you don't need to push anything else. You can just hold that, that sprayer uh, like it is. Uh, we have a, a kneeler bench. You can either uh, fold these legs down and kneel on this bench or use it as a bench for sitting on. So that's pretty versatile. And um, the last picture again is another example of some um, adaptive gardening tools. These ones are actually in kind of a 90 degree shape. And they have an optional arm cuff that you can fit on onto each of these that allow you to use your forearm um, for gardening. And I've found that really helpful as well because I'm not as strong in my wrist, but I have more strength in my forearm. Can we go to the next slide? Okay, AT for gaming. This is a really exciting area. And I think uh, this is gathering a lot of excitement with uh, younger people as well. Um, the Xbox recently came out with an adaptive gaming controller, uh, which is on the left. It's got the traditional directional pad, um, and the buttons are very large, two very large buttons. So you could use that on its own as an adaptive controller, or it's also designed to work with the second thing that is shown on the slide, and that's called the Logitech Adaptive Gaming Kit. Um, this gaming kit comes with a variety of different switches 
that all can plug into the back of this um, adaptive controller and can be used to control any of the buttons or the functions on the controller. Um, so that is really a new area that's exciting and for us and being able to see the different configurations that people have set up um, is amazing really when you if you look at YouTube videos of how these things are being used, um, it's really a game changer for people with disabilities who are gamers. I think we can go to the next slide, please. Um, AT for parenting with a disability. I don't think often we really think about people with disabilities being parents um, and assistive technology really being able to, to help and support with parenting. Uh, what we found with parenting is a lot of devices that we've discovered, we've discovered from parents themselves. Uh, there's not a huge market for, you know, equipment for parents with disabilities. And so a lot of what we've discovered are from parents themselves. So we've got um, the, the front baby carrier that can leave your arms free. That's an example of assistive technology. There is a pacifier that also doubles as a thermometer. So if you're not able to use a thermometer, um, the pacifier can also help you take the temperature. Um, the, the third picture is of a, it's called the, the Bur Burberry uh, feeding device. And this is a spoon attached to a container that you're able to uh, squeeze and the food will come out and onto the spoon. Um, so that may be easier than dipping into a like a baby food container. Um, the other example that I have on this slide is a is an example of a baby monitor um, that can be used by anyone, but um, it's particularly useful for people who are deaf or have hearing disabilities. Um, it includes not only the monitor but a wristwatch that enables you to see the baby on the screen um, anytime the baby makes noise or cries, the wristwatch vibrates. Um, so again, an area that um, has not really been explored too much, but we are finding more and more and getting more and more um, input from parents too. So we're excited about this new area. Can we go to the next slide? Um, finally, we are getting into some assistive technology for outdoor recreation um, and starting an electric bike program. Um, so right now we are in the process of hiring someone to be our outdoor recreation specialist and to run the bike program. Um, these are electric bikes that we're looking to get um, that help folks uh, that may have trouble riding a traditional bike. Um, these are powered by motor, but you can also use the pedals um, and bike, it's just easier. Um, the second example is of a motorized um, fishing wheel. Uh, so if reeling in is hard, uh, this has a motor that can assist with that. We've got a picture of someone with their hunting set up. Uh, we are looking for that person to help with, with folks that are looking to do hunting and fishing. Um, the final example on this slide is of a, a camera that can be mounted onto a wheelchair. Um, and I found this when I was looking for adaptive equipment for um, people who like birding. Um, and there's a whole host of assistive technology for birding as well. So um, this is another really uh, fun area that we like to get into. And again, we believe that assistive technology can help in all life areas. And so recreation is a part of that. Um, next slide, Tracy. So I just provided a list of where to find um, most of these items. A lot of them can be found through your local durable medical equipment providers or even at Walmart, Myers, and Home Depot. Um, the silverware that I, that I mentioned that has tremor canceling technology is called liftware. A lot of these devices were found on Amazon. Um, Independent Living Aids is another company that focuses on assistive technology for community living. I mentioned the Freedom One that you can use in the bathroom or for shaving or other things. Um, Maxi Aids is, is another company like Independent Living Aids. Um, some of the things that we mentioned for assistive technology for mental health can be found in self-care therapy. And of course, the Google Home can be purchased from the Google Store. So that if you're looking for some of this equipment, 
Amazon is definitely a great place to check if, if you use Amazon, but also um, more and more of these devices can be found in places like Meyer and Home Depot. So um, now that we've talked about what assistive technology is and kind of given some examples of assistive technology, I wanted to talk a little bit about where you can go from here and where you could find more support for acquiring and funding assistive technology. So again, as I mentioned, our program has um, information and referral. So um, we can provide people with resources who call into um, Michigan Disability Rights Coalition and help you connect with organizations and resources in your area. Um, we have an online funding guide, um, which will talk you through some um, ways to look for funding for assistive technology. Uh, the Michigan Assistive Technology Loan Fund, we're going to learn more about um, in just a minute. We talked about the atexchange.org, which is the site that allows you to buy or sell uh, used assistive technology equipment. A lot of folks have been able to obtain assistive technology through nursing facility transition programs. Again, their goal is to help people live in the community and assistive technology is a big part of that. And so um, we, we try to work with a lot of nursing home, or I'm sorry, nursing facility staff to understand how assistive, assistive technology works and how it can be funded. It can also be put into a self-determination plan. In fact, I would love to see assistive technology in every kind of person-centered plan or self-determination plan. Um, folks have gotten assistive technology paid for on the habilitation waiver or the My Choice waiver. Um, area agencies on aging also provide services that can provide, that can purchase assistive technology. Um, and OTCTs, rehab engineers, aging and and place specialists are all people that um, may specialize in particular types of AT that can help provide assessments and help with um, getting the right AT for you. Okay. And there we go. Thanks, Laura. Um, we're going to talk a little bit more now about ways to pay for AT. Um, the Michigan Assistive Technology Loan Program began in 2001 and has assisted Michigan residents with disabilities to acquire assistive technology since that point. It's an extremely viable option for Michigan residents with disabilities for many purposes, independent living, education, employment, transportation, communication, recreation. Um, my UCP administers the funds, holds the accounts through our financial partner, which is Michigan State University Federal Credit Union. The applications are taken by the credit union who tries to make a direct loan at that point where they can. If they're unable to approve that loan due to things um, like high debt to income or low credit score, things like that, they gather additional information and send that application through to be reviewed by our loan committee um, to, to request a guarantee. Um, the loan fund can guarantee the loan either at 60 or 100%. Um, the loan, lending committee then reviews the application. Sometimes they ask questions of me to ask the participant that's applied. And then they make a decision about whether or not to guarantee the loan, even though um, those conditions exist. And they might also ask for some other things to be uh, to be required as a part of that application. Things like um, they may direct the credit union who would have made the loan should they have been able to make it at a 36 month term, looking at the individual's budget that we collect, the loan committee could say, um, well, we'd like to see that 48 months to make that payment lower for the individual. The loan committee folks are um, volunteers who um, either who may have disabilities or have worked in the disability community. Um, we have a loan officer um, from a financial institution who's also a part of that committee. And they work as a group um, to be good stewards of funds, but to still be able to make loans to people who might not be able to get traditional loans. It's open to Michigan residents only. Now the AT user can include family members or friends, their medical professionals, rehab specialists, physical or speech therapists, people who are good at building or creating things like artists or engineers, 
um, people who may look at issues differently and can provide valuable insights. Um, however, there's no requirement to submit medical or other professional assessments in order to apply for a loan. Um, the Michigan Assistive Technology Loan Program is all about partnership. We partner with um, Michigan Disability Rights Coalition, where Laura um, is employed, Michigan Rehabilitation Services, Michigan State University Federal Credit Union, Area Agencies on Aging, the Bureau of Services for Blind Persons, and many more organizations as a part of helping people to get the assistive technology they need. Some of the other key programs of my UCP, just to share with folks who may be hearing about us for the first time, are the Ramps for Independence program, um, Quick Ramps. Um, those are ramp solutions that are immediately accessible. You can open the box, put the ramp in place. Um, the assistive technology portion, I'll talk a little bit more in detail about our programs as we go. Um, we provide information and referral. Um, you can send an email through our website. You can call our office. We provide information and referral on all kinds of disability related topics statewide. We have the Bellows Fund, which provides um, assistive technology to individuals with dis disabilities and financial need. Um, that's actually a grant program. Um, the principal earnings from the principal of the fund are allocated on an annual basis. Um, Currently, actually, until the new fiscal year starts in October, those funds have been expended for this year. Um, we partner with Michigan Alliance for Families, a statewide resource to connect families of children with disabilities um, to help with resources to improve their children's education experience. Through person-centered advocacy, we offer navigators to provide things like INR services, specialized training, workshop support groups, and assist all people with disabilities to access community supports. My UCP offers a representative payee program that's also person-centered, where they can be appointed by Social Security um, to help people who receive those benefits and need some assistance with directing or managing their money. Um, and then we have benefits counseling also, which helps Social Security beneficiaries to understand and use work incentives to start or return to work. The loan parameters, um, uh, there's no minimum loan amount. Oh, as a description, I just wanna share this picture of Juan who is very excited with his uh, adaptive vehicle. Um, that's the picture that's on this slide. Um, there's no minimum loan amount and up to $30,000 as a maximum for the, for the loan guarantees. Um, you can use the AT loan for items that you may not be able to get a loan for elsewhere. Um, you have up to 84 months as a term. The credit reporting on these loans that are guaranteed um, can help people to build credit that either have no credit or that may have had credit issues in the past by offering um, that reporting of positive payment over time. It assists and many people have reported to me that they have had um, significant increases in their credit score uh, based on that experience. Um, the loan guarantee also means um, that it gives those folks a chance who, um, who wouldn't have had a chance any other way to get a loan. You can apply um, directly online through this website. Um, I've put a big red circle around how to start the application. If a person does not have online access or they need assistance to apply, this is the phone number and more important, the specific extension to call. If you simply call the credit union, a banker who does not know about our program will apply for the wrong loan. So it's important to use that um, extension. It's helpful for me to be able to talk to folks as they apply because there are, the application is not um, complicated or difficult, but there are a couple of places where people tend to get hung up, I've just found over time. So it's useful if I can sort of walk people through that. I also like to help people learn about how to calculate the gross income that they're asking for. And I can help with specific questions and help them with those calculations because those numbers are really important when we're talking about um, the credit union and for our loan committee to make um, 
uh, good, good choices around providing that. The budget that the they, that we collect at the point where the credit union has not been able to make the loan is used by our loan committee because the credit union has a set amount that it must use as a monthly base cost per person for living as a part of their um, underwriting process. And the loan committee can actually uh, look at what someone's real ins and outs are. We, I know personally, and I have um, during periods of my life when I was on benefits, um, gotten by on much less than the credit union has to use as um, the bottom amount per person for a household. So sometimes those, um, the loan committee is able to guarantee loans um, mostly based on the fact that a person's real budget is different than what an institution might expect. Um, okay, so plans to pay for your assistive technology. One of the things that I tell people all the time is that my job is not to get you in more debt. So I spend a lot of time with what might public or private resources might be available to assist. If an item is for work, is work related, as an example, I can help to get them re referred into Michigan Rehabilitation Services so that something could be paid for. Or if the item is not work related, there may be other resources that come to bear for the person. Um, one of the very, there have been a couple of very successful ones um, for people that I've called about the loan program. One is that if you live in a rural area and you're doing home improvement, there are sometimes grants and very low interest loans, even lower um, than the rate on our loan through USDA Rural Development for home improvement or accessibility. So I've successfully um, shared that information and helped people get started on those loans, um, those types of loans. There are also local community reinvestment dollars available in different areas through financial institutions. There are also local foundations um, and programs for specific types of disability or disability equipment that are available. So because my passion is to get people the assistive technology they need, my job is more than just um, here's a loan. My, the loan can be used in conjunction to fill in the gaps uh, between what a person wants and maybe what can be approved by one of those programs, or it can be standalone if a person chooses um, to just apply for the loan, they're welcome to do that. So minimizing debt. And this um, picture is of a young girl using um, a, a stroller, not a stroller, a walker. I apologize, I used the wrong word. Um, okay, so we have a new program. Yes. Sorry, can you go back to the phone number for the loan fund and I'll sure. put it in chat? Sure, let me go back to that. Um, I, I do encourage people to call my phone number. So if you'd put mine in there with the extension, um, it's 517-203-1200 and then hit number two when the system asks you to um, for the extension you want. That rings directly through to my office where I'll answer the phone um, because it is helpful for people to understand there are just some, some people that get confused over joining the credit union, how to do that part. And also, like I said, some things about calculating income that I can be helpful with. So the number um, directly to the, if the person, they, the credit union does like for people to apply online if they are able to apply online, because then all the disclosures are automatically taken care of. But if they are unable to do that or they do not have online access, this would be the number 517-333-2424. And then the most important extension, 5626. Okay, go back to where. All right, so we also started a, pro a demonstration project um, called the My Lease program uh, so a few months ago. Um, we found that there are people who need equipment um, that is not as high a price and we can do that directly through uh, um, the, our, uh, the dollars that we have. So it's equipment up to $2,500. It can be slightly over that because we don't use additional charges such as tax, shipping, installation. 
So just for the equipment itself, the max is 2,500. Um, it's what we do is have a 1% fee. So the max of the fee is $25, but it's 1% on the amount of the equipment only. So if the equipment is $1,300, then the fee is $13. We add that to it. I'm gonna show you in a moment how that's calculated. And then it's a 24 month maximum lease period. They have the item that whole time, but ownership of the item is transferred after that lease is paid. So in, after the 24 months. So here's a, an image that shows the way that the, that would be calculated. If the equipment is $2,399, as an example, $2,399, then the fee is $23.99. Um, along with the original purchase price, that gives you the total. It's a 24 month period that makes the payments $101.83 per month for the two year lease. So this is a new program. We've, we have several people that are working through the process and then one family that's received their equipment. And um, so that's that program that's new and that we're very excited about. Something I'm working on now that's not yet available, but will be, um, I'm imagining it will be available beginning September the 1st, is a, what's called a buy-down program. And, and the buy-down program, basically, it's based off of what a few other states are doing that allows um, us to purchase a portion of the interest that a person would pay on the front side. And then the credit union um, is, has agreed that they want to help us to make this proposal work where they will participate in it as well. And what it will do is lower the interest on the loan for the person who is applying for the loan. So that, it, so that we purchase it on the front side um, should they pay off the loan early if they choose to, we would be refunded our little portion of whatever that interest that we paid on the front side. And it allows people then to have a lower interest rate on the loan. So I'm working on that now. Um, the proposal will be sent to our leadership and then the proposal will be presented to our financial partner. I'm very excited about it. I think it will um, be so great. Um, our CEO, Leslin, often talks about our our passion for getting AT into people's hands. That's what we care about is that people that need assistive technology are able to obtain it. So the buy down is something um, that is not yet available, but I just wanted to share it with you because it's tough to work on it and not get excited about it. So, um, oh, uh, so Laura, if you wanna come back you can talk about, Laura and I are each gonna share a little bit about assistive technology that we use personally, and then we're gonna be available to answer some more questions. So Laura, I'm gonna to go to your slide if you wanna talk about your AT. Sure, um, so I, um, I thought about what AT I, I use most in my life and, and probably the number one um, that you can see on the right hand side of the screen is my power chair. Um, it's built for me. It's designed for me. Uh, this picture was actually taken on the first day that I got it. And I'm very proud. I'm excited because it has a USB charger that can charge my cell phone, which has been like an amazing just addition to my chair. Um, so that is obviously really important to me. Um, I talked about my love of, of Wi-Fi and uh, voice controlled anything um, because I'm in a chair. Um, and lower to the ground, we tend to have all of these lamps in our house that have the, that are the floor lamps that the, um, to the knob to turn it on is, is up too high. So when I've discovered the, uh, the Wi-Fi lamps that I can use either on my phone or by voice, um, I'm, I'm trying to do everything by voice now. I like it so much. Um, the other picture is an item of something, um, that we call the 30 day med center reminder system. Um, so these are individual pill boxes that can be set up for a month. They're green on one side and red on the other so that um, once you've taken the pills, you can flip over the, the pill box and it shows that you've taken those. Um, I, you know, I just have a hard time organizing and managing my own medication. So this is something that I set up once a month. Um, it's done, I don't really have to think about it or worry about it. It does come with an alarm that is, is quite loud and uh, 
for me, it's a little obnoxious, but uh, so I choose not to use it, but it helps a lot of folks. So it does come with a, an alarm that can be taken off of that pedestal and put anywhere in your house. Um, the final picture is of uh, Surrey. Hey, Laura? Yeah? Can you give me the name of that pill reminder? Sh- sure. It's the th- uh, Med Center, M-E-D, capital C-E-N-T-E-R, mm-hmm. 31 Day Reminder System. This is available on Amazon, um, and they have different types. Some don't have the alarm clock if you don't want that. Um, so, very helpful. Thank the you. other, yeah, the other the picture is is of Surrey. Um, I'm an Apple user, so so I talk to Surrey quite a bit. I I don't. I use text to speech quite a bit for sending messages, um, just opening websites, anything that I want to do. Um, just the fine motor skills with cerebral palsy um, are difficult. So again, anything by voice is, is really my, my jam. It's my thing. So those, that's one of my favorite AT. What about you, Tracy? So I included, there were things I didn't um, include, but I just want to talk. We got a dog at the beginning of COVID and my husband, a very muscular dog who likes to walk. And my husband was doing all the walking Um, because of my heart condition. I can't walk very far. And my husband said, you know, you get all this AT for other people. Why don't you get something so that we can walk the dog together? Um, So I got this chair um, and I love it. Part of the reason I love it is that if you fold it up, he can load it in our car very easily. You can fly by bringing it into the cabin, which if Laura knows, as I know, many of my friends that are wheelchair users get their stuff broken by by airlines all the time. So I can take off that top thing, the controller, bring it on the plane with me, roll that in like luggage. And there's often room, apparently, that's what they told me, at the front of the cabin where they could store it because it folds up so small. The batteries are in the um, wide pieces you see there um, in the bottom that come down and the batteries if you pull those out I can bring them in to charge them in the house and in the winter time I can bring just the batteries in and leave the the vehicle itself in the garage so I love everything about this chair it I've met people in my neighborhood I've lived here for almost nine years and I've met people in my neighborhood who said, when did you move in? Because I just had never walked that far down the street. So that's one thing. The other is the light that you see there is actually for the succulent collection that I started at the beginning of of COVID. And I, I will tell you that what I found is that through the winter, I believe that that light that's here in my office that you're seeing on my face from behind the screen, Besides the plants, what it did for the sort of, they call it sad seasonal affective disorder that I live with, that I've had since I moved to Michigan, I believe, um, it made this year a lot better for me than it would have been without it. So um, because it has full spectrum light that shines in my eyes on the regular all day long, I too use a pill reminder. Um, I tend to use the little baggy ones also from Walgreens that I can zip up when we go on trips and put seven of them in my purse. Um, Those are helpful, but I use one like this next to my chair when we're home. Um, I replaced our can opener with this can opener about a month ago because I thought, why not get something that's physically easier for me to use? You set it on top of the can and it goes around in a circle and then there are no edges. It's a wonderful thing. I got it on Amazon. I think it's made by Kitchen Mama. And then the upper right thing is the most amazing thing. And it's one of those very personal things, but I have used a breathing device at night for years. And one of the things I can't stand is that the hose wraps around my neck. Um, I ordered this thing. I think it came from very, very far away. It took it a long time to get here. But what's wonderful about it is that it holds the hose up out of my way. As you can see to the right of the picture, I can adjust the length and then I am not having that hose wrap around my neck in the night. So I'm passionate about all of these and really happy to share all of them with you. I'm excited about that, that hose device. I just started CPAP therapy like uh, a week ago. So I'm really adjusting and I, I'm excited. I, I didn't know that that existed. I'm very excited about that. I also put a cover on the hose because it feels a lot like an alien, you know, that ribbed hose. So I put, I have a cover on my hose too, but um, yeah, it's made a huge difference in my, even my sleep, not waking up with it around my neck for those of you that are users. So yeah, I got pretty passionate about that. All right. So let's, let's go to some questions. 
And I'll put our information up here while we're doing that. And if you have AT that you really love, we'd love to hear about that too. Looks like Marguerite's got her hand up. Let me go to the chat here and see if I can see if there's any or Q and A. Um, Marguerite, I'm not sure. It says, can this number be used for texting or just voice? I'm not sure which. Oh, for me. Yes, that one's um, an office phone, actually. So you would, it's just voice. Any other? Um, There's a question in chat. Do you provide assistance slash support to post-secondary institutions? We've certainly presented to, if that's what you mean, um, we've presented to post-secondary institutions um, and have had inquiries from them about AT and how to provide AT. Laura, do you have a, another answer for that? Um, well, I will say in Michigan, just in terms of education, there's another organization called alt Shift that works with K through 12 um, for assistive technology. So when it comes to technology for school, we don't, um, we're not allowed to, to supplant what they're doing. Um, so we do, we can support and provide assistance to post-secondary um, in terms of, again, like providing the demonstrations and loans of, um, of devices and, and helping with, uh, with referrals. So yes, um, oftentimes, um, I know that post-secondary institutions purchase assistive technology for students also. So um, we would look into that as to whether that could be a potential funding source. Hope that makes sense. Does anyone else have any questions, thoughts, uh, wanna share what they found that they're excited about assistive technology wise? Okay. Do you see anything, Diane, before I? Um, I see that Marguerite has her hand up. Do you need to speak, Marguerite, or do you want to? Oh, is the look in the q and A? I don't know what that means, Marguerite. Is your question in the q and A? Uh, open, I don't see any open questions there. It looks like they've all been answered. Barb, I see your hand up. Do you need something? Do you want to talk? Are you good? Nope, she put her hand down. Okay. All right, well, I've just got to say, um, it's been a real privilege. I've known Laura for a long time, but working on this with you was so exciting and so much fun. And it was very wonderful to share this with you. So I'm hey, just going to thank you for doing that with me. Grace. Uh, there is a question. What is the average length of time it takes to process a loan request? Sure. So if the credit union can make the loan directly, um, then it happen. It can happen as quick. I've had somebody pick up a check within two days of the, like they apply and two days later, they pick up a check. If they, if it requires a guarantee and it comes over to the committee, they have two weeks to make a decision. Now, oftentimes it does not, I don't know, in the time I've been on this job, it's never taken the full two weeks. But it also depends on it, when the person submits the paperwork that's asked for. So say there's an old debt on their, on their credit report and the committee says to me, and the person says, well, I paid it off, the committee wants proof of that, then the person has to obtain and send in proof of that um, before we can move forward. So all of those things, I, I would say the max would be two weeks. Oops, I was trying to type an answer to Marguerite's question. Marguerite, I, I, I'm, I'm not trying to speak for you, Tracy, but um, your phone is an office phone number and so it's not a cell, right? Right. Um, so that would not work text. It might have to call through 711. 
I've definitely um, assisted some people who contacted me through an interpretation service, and I'm more than happy to do that. Whatever I can do in any way to make it easier, um, you can email me if you prefer. Um, there's other things that we could do. Um, I can sign into uh, you know, a chat. I don't know. We'll find a way to communicate. You just share with me what the best way would be, and I'll make that work. Oh, email. Email's a good way. I put Tracy's email and Laura's email both in the chat, Marguerite. Okay. All right. So um, if that's it for questions for the time being, I'm going to talk a little bit about our next topic. And part of the reason that I'm excited to talk about it is somebody pointed out earlier, aren't you going to talk about computers? Why, yes. Yes, we are going to talk about computers and accessibility. Our next AT topic uh, AT Talks topic will be built-in accessibility for Macs and PCs. In that session, two presenters will share with you their insights on how those systems can be made accessible through already existing accessibility functions. Karen Tibbs is a licensed occupational therapist with 25 plus years working with children with neurological disorders. She presents nationally, internationally, and locally on topics related to assistive technology, educational team building, inclusive classrooms, ergonomics, work skills, and more. Claudette Stork Reed is an occupational sheriff therapist. Uh, occupational therapist with the Business Network Division of Michigan Rehabilitation Services. Her professional interests focus on the use of assistive technology for vocational accommodations, as well as ergonomics and organizational skill development. So please join us on Thursday, August the 12th at 10 o'clock a.m. to learn about ways to maximize what your computer can do for you. Very excited to hear what they have to say. And thank you all for participating today. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.